Hello everyone and welcome to a week of Linux news for the 30th of October 2016. Now we're going to start the week with some really surprising news, so if you're standing up I would suggest you sit down and if you are taking a drink I'd suggest you swallow it. So, I attempted to install Arch Linux in VirtualBox and I failed. Oh well, I tried. So I was following the install guides, which I have to say do seem to be really good. However, when you actually try and run through it, they are a little bit uh, vague for my liking. And, well, I can tell they've just been written by someone who has used the system quite successfully. So I ran through it and got to the point of installing the VirtualBox guest edition drivers, which okay, took me a couple of attempts. Upon reboot, didn't recognize my CPU. So yep, I had to go back, add that as a module. That worked okay. Reboot it again, and no network. Damn. Couldn't solve the issue. Don't know. Gave up. So, I was trying to solve this, this bug where it won't install properly in Arch Linux. So it turns out the software names are different, and the usernames are different, and it's just, that's been the issue. I think I'm going to have to go back to trying to solve it with the Arch Wiki. It's just going to be quicker. Oh well. It's going to be a guessing game though. Anyway, onwards with the news. I have already talked about the dirty cow exploit in Linux, where it's a race condition of copy on write in the memory can cause a privilege escalation. So one of the questions is, is there an actual exploit for this? And yes, the initial exploit was against web servers. However, there now appears to be an exploit against Android phones. This proof of concept exploit is being used to gain root privileges on the system for rooting the device. And it's been shown to work reliably on all versions of Android. And there's video included in this news story. Okay, the exploit has been delivered via USB, so you can say, oh, well, I'm not going to get it over the network or installing something from the Play Store. No, but it's only a matter of time before the exploit is adapted, and it could well be possible to receive the exploit over the internet for a drive-by attack, or for an app from the Play Store or a rogue third-party store. And of course, all manufacturers and networks are going to be really prompt at supplying the update. Uh, yeah, right. I would imagine that only Google Nexus devices are protected. And just Google Pixel now as well. Just be really annoying. They changed the name, didn't they? So Pixel and Nexus devices. Here's a news story to stir up a fanboy war. Ubuntu versus Linux Mint, which is better in 2016? So the author of this article has reviewed various sections and given a score at the end of which they feel is most important to each distro. I'm just going to look through the scoring really, which uh, out of 100 they've given Ubuntu 93 and Linux Mint 94. Well, that's pretty close really, isn't it? There's only one item I really disagree with, and that's upgradability and updates. Linux Mint 8 out of 10. Well, no, because this default behavior of not installing updates for the kernel, and yes, I know you can change that through the update manager. No, this exploit about Dirty Cow has shown that an unknown number of users may never receive that update. Now, of course, I'm saying unknown, it may, may be a lot, maybe a little amount, who knows, but a number of users may never receive the update, and it leaves a Linux distribution open to well, quite a severe attack, really. Yes, it's more prevalent on web servers, as I've already stated, but... Who knows what could be done with the exploit. As we've seen, it's been used against Android phones. For me, it comes down to which desktop interface I like using. I like a nice Unity-styled look in KDE. Lenovo downward dogs with the Yoga BIOS update supporting Linux installs. So a few weeks ago, I talked about how Lenovo appeared to be blocking Linux updates on certain Yoga systems. This was due to a proprietary raids that are running on the solid state disk to make it faster. And the issue was that there were no Linux drivers available for this proprietary raid. However, Lenovo have now released an update for the BIOS, which will downgrade the raid to a different type, it looks like, and allow for Linux installs. That's some good news there. And now some amusing news for the week. A topless in-car selfie attempt climaxes with a rear-end bonking. A young woman's attempt to take a topless selfie has ended up with a rear-end cop bonking. <laughs> Miranda K. Radder fell foul of Texas City of Bryan Police Department after she collided with a parked patrol car. 
According to Radha, she was sending photos through Snapchat to her boyfriend, says the department's Facebook post on the matter. But the police have been too polite to include elements of the story which have been widely circulated elsewhere, such as Reuters' report that says when the officer whose car had been hit approached Radha, she was trying to pull on her blouse. Radha's therefore been widely interpreted as attempting to take a topless selfie. She has been charged with driving while under the influence as an open bottle of wine was reportedly found in her car. Said beverage may explain the topless selfie. <laughs> Good effort. There's been quite a few distros released this week, so starting with Primtux, this is a French educational distribution based on Debian. There's an updated release of Sabian Linux, which is based on Gentoo, and I never used Gentoo, and after my experience on Arch, yeah, I don't think I'll be rushing. Maui Linux version 2 has been released. This is another KDE distro on Ubuntu. They seem to have based it off KDE Neon, so I'm not really sure what they're going for there. So this took over from Netrunner, and I thought Netrunner had completely disappeared, but it turns out that's not the case because Netrunner have also released an update. So version 16.09, and this is based on Debian, also with the KDE desktop. So Netrunner are continuing on with Debian base, and Maui Linux are using the Ubuntu base. The Bodhi Linux version 4 has been released. This is based on Ubuntu 16.04 long-term support and uses the Moxa desktop. This is a fork of E17. Why they had to fork E17 though, I don't know. It's, uh, I didn't think it was a particularly well-used desktop to start with, so now you've forked a small desktop. Adding to the number of desktops in Linux. And finally, there's been an updated release of Clonezilla. So Clonezilla comes with Ubuntu and Debian based, and it doesn't really use a desktop as such. It boots more into a terminal interface with uh, keyboard selectable menus. So it's for carrying out imaging of hard drives. And I have to say, it does a bloody good job. So that was the news for this week. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.